Good evening, I'm Dennis Ward, and this is Face to Face. Our guest this week is Cree actor and filmmaker Cody Lightning. Cody comes from a family of actors, including mother Georgina, sister Crystal, and brother William. He's been acting since the age of five and was nominated for a Young Actor Award for his role as young Victor in the 1998 cult classic Smoke Signals. Cody recently wrote, directed, and starred in Hey Victor, a mockumentary about Cody trying to make the sequel Smoke Signals 2 Still Smoking. Cody received two Canadian Screen Award nominations for the film. He's also fresh off a role in Marvel's Echo. Cody, welcome to the show. Hello, Tanse. What's up? <laughs> Thanks for having me. Uh, congrats on the award nominations and all the success of late. Uh, I had a chance to finally f watch Hey Victor. Uh, it's something that I've been excited about since I saw the first trailer. Uh, for those unfamiliar with the premise, can you tell us uh, what Hey Victor is all about? Hey Victor is all about full frontal uncle. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, Hey Victor is a really vulgar, crass mockumentary uh, based off of the actors of Smoke Signals. Uh, 25 years uh, after the film Smoke Signals has come out. Um, it's strongly based around the childhood actors, myself and Simon Baker, and what we're doing 25 years later. And I did my best to get the cast back together, uh, the team, so to say, the band. And we did a pretty good job at doing that. Um, yeah, so ever since I acted in Smoke Signals in 1998, I every time I went to a powwow, social gathering, ceremony, anything like that, um, it was, oh, hey, Victor. Oh, you're the Victor kid. Hey, Victor. And Simon got the same thing. Like, oh, you're, you're Thomas. You're little Thomas. And... Um, that lasted well throughout my teenage years, into my 20s, and into my 30s. And even though I've been in several film projects since Smoke Signals, where I've had leading roles in films, uh, so great supporting roles in films, that part was so iconic, and it stuck with me <laughs> until current, and now even more that, hey, Victor's out. But that that role really changed my life as a young child actor and we just made kind of a joke when i was living in boise idaho uh with some other filmmaker friends uh that you know I, what if we made some wild rambunctious comedy where i'm getting kicked out of bars and clubs and casinos and big events and just throwing out the whole don't you know who i am like i'm little victor i'm cody lightning from little victor i was little victor and spunk signals and no one has any clue like what that means or who the hell i am and we just thought it was funny and then we pitched the idea at imaginative film festival as a short film and we thought we would just uh, it would be simon baker and myself and we would have fun for a couple of weeks, make a short film and put it in some festivals. And at that pitch, we didn't win, but we were told by several people there, other producers and stuff, that it should be a feature film or a series. And so I met up with my, my writing partner, Sam Miller, and we wrote the script, got the majority of the cast involved, and we made a really wild, hilarious, Holt classic. <laughs> well, I absolutely love uh, mockumentaries. I saw Terry from FUBAR was shouting out the movie. Uh, was there a reason that you envisioned this a as a mockumentary? Well, I'm, I'm a big mockumentary fan. So, like, shows like The Office and Parks and Rec, Trailer Park Boys, FUBAR, you know, um, also, like, Best in Show. There's a film I love uh, called... Um, uh, incident at Loch Ness uh, right. that I watched when I was like 18 and I just love that style of filmmaking and the way we shot my film was two cameras going at once at all times 
while we were in scene and while we were cut, they were still, you know, the BTS, you know, behind the scenes stuff, we, they were filming so much that we were getting a lot of extra material to add into the film as well. So there was the quote unquote meta aspect of it where a film within a film within a film, what's real, what's not. And um, yeah, that's where the idea kind of sparked from. Uh, despite being a mockumentary, is there some truth in there? Like the opening lines are pretty funny, but it, is there some truth to uh, some of the things that you're, you're saying in the movie? <laughs> well, <laughs> when people ask, where does real Cody end and fake Cody come into play? Um, if people have to ask that question, then we did our job very well. Right. <laughs> um, there's a lot of, there's some truth, uh, but it's, it's sprinkled with, you know, fictionalized versions. Like I said, uh, I'm not Cody from Hey Victor, but I amped and, you know, up the stakes of the, the craziness, the vulgarness, you know, the foul language and the substance abuse and just the, the nuttiness of him for, for the film. <laughs> You kind of spoke about, you know, the impact on you of Smoke Signals, but what do you think the impact of that film was on Indigenous peoples and Indigenous peoples on the screen? Smoke Signals? Yeah. Oh, Smoke Signals was incredible. So in 1998, well, when, it, when Smoke Signals was made, it was an independent feature film that went to Sundance Film Festival, and it won the film festival. And from there, it got distribution, and it was in theaters all throughout the U.S. I don't know if it was anywhere else other than the U.S. Uh, I was too young to know how that worked at that time, but I know in America, it was in almost every theater. And to be a part of that, I didn't know how important it was at that time. I knew it was, like, awesome, but I didn't know how big it was at the time and how how it was going to blossom into something even bigger. And it's huge. Smoke signals, quotes, memes, everything are so huge in society, especially in indigenous communities, that, um, you know, I, I didn't know it was going to be that big. And for it to be that big and for me to make a whole film that's based off of that that is not and i quote not smoke signals too <laughs> um is incredible and like i said before from my young years in the film industry people recognize me my school teachers were like hey mister like i i just went to the movie theater and i saw a film called smoke signals and i didn't know you were in it and i'm like yeah and this is in los angeles california yeah. And that was happening. It's so wild. Uh, well, Hey, Victor's played at some pretty prestigious film festivals as well. Opened at Tribeca. You're, you're up for two Canadian Screen Awards yourself. Best lead performance in a comedy and best original screenplay. Is, is the movie getting the reaction that you hoped it would? Oh, 100%. Um, to just be accepted into Tribeca Film Festival and Toronto International Film Festival and all the other festivals we've, we've been in is such a huge accomplishment. So just to have an idea that you're able to write and make this make a script or anything that's readable, viewable is a huge accomplishment. And then to take it to the next level of actually getting your funding is another accomplishment. And then to get it made another one and then to get it into festivals huge and now we're in theaters i can't express how grateful i am for what this project has done not just for myself but for the people involved our friends our family our community our support systems and yeah it's it's pretty vulgar and wild and it's not for everyone that's fine but that's my sense of humor my sense of humor is very you know, over the top. And if you go to any reserve, that's how we are. Like I've, 
I've gotten a lot of my jokes, a lot of my material from the young people and the elders. You know, young people, I was working with youth for about six years in, in Enoch, and the stories and the things I would hear from these young people were so wild, especially when they feel like there wasn't an adult in the room, right? You you let, let them play a little bit, and then you, you hear this stuff. It's so crazy. And then elders as well from from these traumatic things that have happened to us and we're able to make light of it shine light on the darkness and have a laugh and that's what hey victor is lots of laughs in it uh, and cody's not joking for the elders and the uh, young victors out there there is full frontal uh, uncle in there uh, <laughs> Cody, uh, much more to talk about here. We just got to step aside for a quick break and then we'll continue the conversation here on Face to Face. Stick around. Okay. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is actor and filmmaker Cody Lightning, who's recently released Hey Victor. He's up for a bunch of awards, uh, streaming now as well. Uh, you know, uh, Cody, was this film a, a long time coming? We recently had uh, filmmaker Kelvin Redvers on the show, who just also released his first feature, Cold Road, and he said it took years to get that off the ground. And that he'd been in rooms with people who finance and distribute movies who were like, yeah, indigenous stories, they just aren't viable and, and don't make money. Well, yeah. Uh, so when you're dealing with like indigenous content, that's a niche market, right? In the, in the broad spectrum of what's out there, it's a niche market. And so in in reality, not a lot of people get to see our films and for investors, people that want to put money into projects in hopes of getting a return. Um, it's tough. It's really tough. Um, so as a creator and a filmmaker myself, what do you want to, you know, what are you willing, where are you willing to bend? Where are you willing to adapt? Uh, but still keep your core roots of what what's true to you in your projects to put out there. Um, you could make a film that's beautiful and amazing and you break even. You could make a film that's very informative and awesome that doesn't do well. You could make something silly, wild and crazy that's blowing up. And you never know. It's always a gamble. And for us to... Um, for for my project, um, have this. It's very it's very personal to the indigenous community, and to my friends and my family, and and those who who have worked on smoke signals. But like, it's it's very niche, and so it's it's tough to get investors to want to hop on board with that. And I I do understand because. In this world, it's about money. Like, oh, if I give you this money, what am I going to get back? Like, what's what what's in it for me? You get a lot. And it's unfortunate. Like, there's what I call safety projects, which are catered to investors. Um, I don't think in that box. I think outside that. And unfortunately... If you think outside that box, a lot of times you won't get your funding to make your project. And there are so many gems, so many beautiful pieces that should be made that aren't mm -hmm. because funders, it, like they don't get anything back from that. And it's a, all a money thing. And it's really unfortunate because there's so many beautiful, raw, edgy, envelope pushing projects that should and could and be made that aren't. And hopefully with my project, Hey Victor and others that I'm going to create and like the late Jeff Barnaby was on the road to that. And mm -hmm. so many other fil filmmakers, um, let's, let's keep pushing the boundary. Let's make people feel uncomfortable with the uncomfortable, you know, <laughs> everything can all just be one thing. You know, the, one of the things about Smoke Signals is there was nothing like it, and it was the only thing out there at the time. But what, what does it say to you almost uh, 30 years later now, I guess, that we have multiple 
movies, feature films by indigenous people, starring indigenous people in theaters right now? It, it, so with Smoke Signals, it was it was contemporary. And a lot of projects coming out weren't contemporary. There was a lot of period pieces. And in Hollywood, uh, there was like one project per year that everyone mm. grad, you know, was gravitating towards. And as far as like creativity, it wasn't written by indigenous people. It wasn't filmed or produced by indigenous people. And if you look at the, you know, what's by us for us and then our allies to creating amazing things, a lot of the projects that have come out weren't that at all. It was, it wasn't even for our audience. It was for, non-indigenous audiences for this fairy tale you know of who we are and with things like reservation dogs and all these other projects coming out with like uh, like taika white tt over there what he's doing and black horse low with all these amazing filmmakers and sally kiwiosh and all these beautiful filmmakers it's it's been a long time coming for us to have what we have now and we owe it all well I'm, I'm speaking on my on behalf of myself but for others as well i'm hoping we owe it to those who have paved the way for us to now take it to the next level and that this younger generation is going to take it even further i have never in my life of over 30 years in this industry seen as much exposure as as much uh, recognition that we've like it we've never had this much ever so when i'm on social media looking at all this stuff that we're doing with all these projects and all these beautiful filmmakers and creators i get a little emotional sometimes i'm like we're really doing it it's we should have been doing this a long time ago but for some reason for some reason we didn't for some reason and there's there's a lot of things there but we're doing it now and it's it's only going to go up from here and i can't wait and i'm so honored and blessed to be a part of the now of what we're doing well speaking of the now and another big production you were recently a part of uh, marvel's echo uh can you tell us how that came to be and whether you ever thought you'd be uh, you know on disney uh, in the marvel universe yeah holy hey victor and marv uh, biscuits on <laughs> echo completely different characters <laughs> um but yeah that's acting uh I, oh man, when I auditioned for Echo and then got the call that I, I nailed that role and I was going to be a part of it, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that, you know, little old me <laughs> was going to be in Marvel. I couldn't believe it. And when I got down there, they made me feel so at home, so welcome, so warm, and... I was able to bring a lot of my comedic presence and timing to the character of Biscuits um, into that project. And we we worked on that for a whole six months. That's the longest I've ever worked on any shoot. Usually it's a few weeks, sometimes a month, maybe two or three. That was six months down in Atlanta, Georgia. It was very hot and I sweat heavily i am an alberta boy i like cold hockey rinks i'm a winter person and to be down there in georgia working in the middle of summer oh man <laughs> i was a sweat ball but to work with other actors like you know devry jacobs and and tentu cardinal and a lockwood cox and you know chaske spencer the whole crew um on echo was it, it was amazing and there was nights where i was laying there know halfway through production and just so grateful and just wondering like really i get to be a part of this like i i get to have a piece of this and it, it's it's humbling and it's it's truly beautiful and i'm so blessed that i got to be a part of that project um and it, this might be cliche to say, but you know, if I can do it, anyone can do it. But if you, if you have that resiliency and if you have that drive and tenacity, you'll, you'll make something. And if what you make is not exactly what you want in the moment, the next project will and the next project will and the next project will, and it'll keep going up from there. 
it's not going to take you down. It's going to take you up. So keep going, keep going. And the fact that I was on Echo is truly incredible and amazing. And I'm so honored and blessed that I was able to be a part of that project. Awesome stuff. Uh, Cody, we just have to step aside for one more quick break and then we'll continue the conversation here on Face to Face with Cody Lightning. Stick around. Welcome back to Face to Face. Our guest this week is actor, filmmaker Cody Lightning, and uh, we've been talking about, hey, Victor, uh, his latest uh, film that's out there streaming now, wherever you rent or buy your movies. Uh, Cody, of course, you're part of uh, a family of people in show business. Uh, your mom, Georgina, who we almost had a cameo from there a few minutes ago, uh, is hilarious in uh, Hey Victor. I think your sister Crystal has like a in there for a second. I think I saw her in there. Henry, your brother-in-law's in the the movie uh, Lightning Cloud soundtracks uh, part of it. <laughs> uh, what was it like to be able to work with you know your family uh, and and friends for this film? Absolutely beautiful. I love it. Um, so there was a bigger part for my sister, but. After how filmmaking works, you have so much material to work with, and it's all about how the story's going to go. So we, you have to cut things out that you want in there, and some things, you know, you have to cut whole sections out. So my sister Crystal actually had a bigger part in it, but we had to cut some of it just for the way the storyline was going. Um, but yeah, to be able to help friends and family is is the biggest thing for me. And not just my friends and family, but up and coming filmmakers as well. It's really tough. This business is hard and it's not friendly a lot of times. So when I can help others, you know, to uh, polish up their ideas or help them with their pitches to get funding, to make something or to just be a part of their project in any way, shape or form. That's what this is all about for me. You know, indigenous people were, were given gifts and it's for me if i'm given a gift it's not mine to hold on to and take and keep and be greedy with i take it i use it and i give it back it's it's for everyone it's not just for me if i'm given something you know i can use it to help friends and family help myself you know on the upward path and then give it away and we have a lot of upcoming filmmakers actors performers artists musicians everything that need these tools so to know that I have this bag of tools that I can give to others is amazing. Well, when we had Crystal on the show a couple of years ago, we were talking about, you know, all of you moving out to L.A. at such a young age, uh, doing things like Three Ninjas Kickback at uh, six <laughs> years old or whatever. But, um, you know, decades later, do you feel like, and for your mom too, like everything's kind of been paying off lately in the last few years, uh, lots of nominations and stuff like that, uh, roles that you've uh, really been wanting? Yeah, well, it, it, it just not just the indigenous part of the film industry, the film industry in general. It's tough. You have your ups, your downs. You have times where you're getting work. You have long periods where you're not getting work. And you sometimes you want to throw in the towel. Sometimes, you know, you're like, things are so awesome right now. It's only going to get better. And it doesn't. You never know. So for us as a family unit to to have left or moved away from Alberta to go to Los Angeles. We did what we did and now we're back home and we're doing and giving back, you know, the, the gift of filmmaking, storytelling, acting, producing these projects is that's what it's for. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard. The industry is very hard. So to be where we're at, you know, is, is, it means everything. <laughs> Awesome stuff, Cody. Um, we're all out of time, but again, congrats on all the accolades and the film. It's absolutely hilarious. Uh, appreciate you being with us, uh, joining us from your daughter's hockey tournament. Hope she uh, wins big there. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hi, hi. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on today. That's all the time we have for the show this week. I'm Dennis Ward. We'll see you back here on Face to Face in seven days.